Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Dickinson. I am um, with Grad Solutions and helping host this webinar today. Um, since it's just starting out, we've got um, on your bar on the right hand side of your screen should be a chat box option. And there's also a question and answer um, section. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started in just two minutes. So hang tight um, and I'll be right back to kick this off. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Again, welcome to our webinar today, which is how to be a successful online student. We're gonna be talking about overcoming challenges to online learning. Um, so again, my name is Chris Dickinson, and I am the Director of Community Relations at Grad Solutions. Um, this is the second of a series of webinars that Grad Solutions will be um, putting on throughout the summer. Uh, so on April 23rd, our next webinar will be based on depression and how to overcome um, that topic. We also have um, listed on the, the screen here, college and career readiness, uh, positive parenting techniques, down to um, relationships and online teaching. So uh, stay tuned for more webinars from Grad Solutions. Um, at the end of this webinar, you're going to receive a survey um, asking you to rate this webinar, uh, talk about the pacing, uh, the content that we're delivering, as well as there will be a text box for you to input any suggestions you have for uh, different webinars that we could be putting on for everyone. So we would love for you to join us um, at these um, in the series. So. Uh, today, this webinar is going to be put on by uh, Ms. Jessie Anderson. She is a mentor with Grad Solutions. And we also have uh, Lisa Prevetera, who is an English language arts instructor, also from Grad Solutions. Uh, and I will just be facilitating and essentially hosting the webinar for everyone. Uh, just a quick point of reference for how GoToWebinar works. Uh, you should see on your screen a uh, questions area. This is a great place where you can type in questions you have throughout the presentation. Um, at the midway point, I will be uh, checking those questions and then between uh, Lisa, Jesse, and I, we will be answering those questions then and also at the uh, conclusion of the presentation. Also, I have uploaded uh, a few handouts for you, uh, the first being a, a PDF version of this PowerPoint. Uh, there's also a pro tips for being a successful online student um, handout in there as well. If for some reason uh, you're unable to access them through the webinar system, they will be sent out with uh, a follow-up email uh, later today. 
and we'll also have a recording of this webinar for you to keep and to share. Topics for today's webinar, we're gonna talk about motivation, organization, time management, pretty much everything that uh, a successful student would need uh, the skills to uh, be a successful online student. Uh, Grad Solutions is an online-based program, uh, and we get students all the time from a traditional school district or charter school uh, that have, that's never been online. And also with the current uh, community health crisis uh, emergency, uh, there are a lot of students now going to online platforms. So we thought it would be a great idea to put out some helpful tips that we have collected over the last few years um, working in this online environment. So there's that. Uh, the goal for today is to really learn some tips and tricks on becoming that successful online student. So first up uh, for the presentation, we have Jesse Anderson, a mentor. Uh, Jesse, she works with um, numerous students and she's got lots of insight on these different topics. So I'd like to welcome Jesse. Make sure you're unmuted. Cannot hear you, let's see. Can you test your audio, Jesse? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yay. Thank you, Jesse. Hey guys. Yes, yeah, so thank you for joining us. We're really, really excited to talk to you about all of this today. So we're gonna start with motivation. So motivation is really, really important to have in order to stay focused on the goal. It's really easy to lose sight of sometimes though, especially with things going on, like what's happening in the world right now, right? So I always like to remind students to think about your why. There's a reason that you enrolled in the program. You know, why do you wanna receive your diploma? For some, it's because of their parents or they want their kids to be proud of them or maybe they're gonna be the first person in their family to graduate. And for some, it's because of a job and to have opportunities down the road. But no matter what it is, their why is really, really powerful. And I like to talk about this a lot with the students and bring it up often because it's easy to lose sight of our why and it just helps to be reminded. And for, to me, anybody who's enrolled with us is a fighter and it shows how strong they are and how determined they are to create a better future for themselves, especially when they have a lot of other things going on in their life. And I tell them all the time how much they inspire me because no matter what obstacles they're facing, they're determined to get through school and receive their diploma. And I think that's amazing and it's worth being reminded of. It's so brave and it shows how strong will they are, which is really admirable. And I love nothing more than to have those conversations. Also, it's important to not base your success on the end goal. So obviously the end goal is to graduate and get your diploma, but it's a process and it's a journey to get there that comes with a lot of highs and lows. It's easy to have a bad day and get discouraged and wanna give up. We've all been there but you have to shift your perspective and celebrate the little victories along the way that are helping you get there. We're all gonna have a bad day or go through some really challenging times in life, but that's when it's important to hang on because along the way, there's gonna be little small victories that are happening every single day that are getting you closer to your goal. So we have to step back and remember how far we've come because that's what's easy to lose sight of. And that's where we as mentors can offer that motivation and provide those really good reminders. Next slide, please. So it's important to stay organized so that you don't let too much time pass and lose track of your progress. It also helps you to be a lot more efficient. Since everything in the program is done online, it's really good to have an outline of what you need to work on every single day. And when we discuss your graduation goal and how much you need to accomplish every month, then we can break it down into weeks and days if we need to, as far as how you can best organize your schedule. So there's a few different ways that can help you start to begin to get organized. Um, you can use a physical planner, which I love. I'm a paper person and I have to write things down. 
but some other people love technology. So you can use your phone, there's different apps, you know, programs that you can use to kind of plan out your days for your schedule. It's also really important to create a daily routine, something that's manageable that you can do every single day. And I say manageable because sometimes a daily routine is brand new and you wanna have something that's kind of simple at first that's realistic to accomplish to get you in that habit. You can also use checklists, which I love. And there's actually science that shows that there's a chemical reaction that happens in our brain every time we're able to check something off a to-do list. And we all know how good that feels to cross something off or check a box for something we've done, even if it's something tiny and small. So that can be really, really motivational as well. Next slide, please. So time management is a whole different conversation with every single student that I love to have. You've got to have a healthy balance or you're going to get burned out and you're going to get discouraged. And you might also need to start creating healthy boundaries in your day. So here are some things that are important that when we talk about time management with students. So the first thing is check your communications daily. You're going to get emails and texts from your orientation counselor, from your mentor, from the teachers. And it's really important to read those and respond. Um, this, it seems small, but this daily activity is gonna help set you up to be more successful in your life because it's training you to have the discipline to do that. This isn't a school where we can all see each other in person. So all the communications are really, really important and it's a really big part of your success. Also your work environment. What are you using to work on your classes? Do you have a laptop or a computer or can you only do work on your phone? If that's the case, we have a loaner tablet program that you can have a tablet until you graduate. So that would be extremely helpful and help you be more successful. When we talk about work habits, I always remind students to not work in front of the TV or laying down in bed, because that's not gonna set them up for success. When all the work is done online, you've gotta be disciplined and you have to make time for it and you have to make sure that you're working in the right environment. Also, do you have a job? If you do, then we'll talk about your work days and your hours, and we'll kind of help plan a schedule around that. If you don't have a job, we're gonna create a more structured schedule where school is the priority, but there's still gonna be boundaries throughout the day so that there's no burnout. Sleep and exercise, we hear all the time, but it's just really critical, especially now, for physical, mental, emotional health and wellness. Um, it's making sure you know, you're getting the proper rest that you need so you have the energy, any form of exercise, right now it's hard, we have to get kind of creative. So even if you're just walking, you know, which we're still allowed to do, that's good. It helps keep your energy levels up, it just helps you feel better overall. So making sure you're getting a good balance of those is really important. But the really nice thing about Grad Solutions is that there's a lot of flexibility with our program. You don't have to work certain days or a certain amount of hours at a time, but it's most beneficial the more you can work throughout the month so it doesn't slow you down and you don't lose that momentum. And once we know your personal goal and how much you wanna accomplish every month, we can break it out accordingly based on your life and your schedule. Next slide, please. So we're gonna talk about the benefits of a learning plan. And for those of you who don't know, the learning plan is a document that shows the classes that you're currently enrolled in and then the ones you're gonna take in the course of the school year. And I love this conversation because it helps the students and the parents and I engage in the planning of their courses and the timeline that they wanna be in school. It also helps me to learn more about their interests, um, their style of learning, what courses they like or they don't like, so we can kind of schedule those accordingly. But it just helps to have a plan so it's not so overwhelming and that we're all on the same page. But the learning plan can also be flexible and it can change as time goes on, and it usually does. So anytime a student is ready for another class, I will revisit the learning plan with them and we discuss it, what course they're ready for, and also, on the other end of that, anytime as a student, you're close to finishing a class, that's a really good time to check in with your mentor to review that as well. This is also a really great time to talk about the graduation plan. So we will review the courses that you have left, and then we go over timeframes of when they can graduate, depending on how much time they spend in the courses. So the workload of a full-time student is to complete one class, one whole class per month. But the NPR, which is the minimum progress required to stay in the program, is completing half of a class per month. So normally, students are really surprised to learn that if they only complete the NPR monthly, it's gonna take a lot longer to graduate. But as mentors, we're always, we have to review the NPR to make sure that they know what's required to stay enrolled. 
but most students develop a personal goal that's gonna involve completing much more than the minimum. And we are here to help you develop a plan that's gonna get you to graduation on your own schedule. And of course, we understand that life happens. In some months, you're only gonna be able to complete the NPR, and that's okay. That's the beauty and the flexibility of the program. This is where it takes participation though and communication with a mentor, because when we know what obstacles you're facing, we can help you out. And then we can always revisit the graduation plan and make changes if we need to. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about building relationships. And I love to talk about this because it's so important. Communication is the most important part of the mentor-student relationship. It helps us so much to know what's going on in your life so that we know how to help you. There's certain parts of the month where we have to talk about the NPR and the due dates and the progress. But for the most part, I wanna talk about you. I wanna know about you and your life and what's going on, what your interests are, your hobbies, your family life, your struggles and obstacles, all of it. Plus, I know I speak for all of us when I say, but that's way more fun to talk about than just talking about progress all the time. And it helps us to have a lot stronger of a relationship. But also communication leads to trust. I have had a lot of students with a history in education that is not healthy, where they haven't had good experiences or they haven't had a lot of encouragement. So when they come to me with that background, I can sense that. And sometimes it takes time to build that trust and for them to know that we just wanna offer motivation and encouragement and that we're on their side and in their corner. And this is a lot of times new for students depending on their previous experience just to have a dedicated person who's calling you every week, who's asking you questions and trying to get to know them. It's really important to know too, that we don't judge anything you've been through. We wanna help you from start to scratch, create a whole new experience. Our sole reason for being here is to help you out. You are so important to us and we're on this whole journey together. Communication also leads to knowing how we can help and support you because we have tons of resources that are available to you. So we have free tutoring. Um, the teachers will, can help you in person. Well, not right now, but when the world opens again, we have in-person tutoring. They can do it online. They can do it over the phone. You know, they're willing to drive again when they can to help you wherever you are and do everything they can to accommodate your needs. Also, communication with a teacher is extremely important. We have amazing teachers that I can't ever say enough good things about. Our full-time teachers have spent their whole career in public schools and they each have 20 to 30 years of experience. So they bring a ton of expertise and they love to help you specific to your learning needs. So being in communication with them is very beneficial. No one wants you to be stuck or struggle. So please know that there's always help available no matter what you need in your class. We also have a community resource specialist. This person's role is to help connect students in need with support services. And the goal is to improve their well-being and remove the barriers so that they can successfully get through school. They can provide assistance for anything from medical, behavioral, mental health, housing, jobs, any of that. So anything that you need, they can help connect you with that resource and put you in touch with the right people and the right places. We also have counseling services. Um, we have support for students and families through counseling. So for our students, there's a free consultation and then there's a sliding scale up to $20 per session. Any students with an IEP, the sessions are covered. So this is an amazing service to take advantage of because counseling can be really costly and it's not usually covered very well by health insurance. So it's so amazing that we can offer this to students and families. So, so as you can see, we have so many tools available to help you be as successful as possible. And speaking to students, if you're able and willing to be honest and open up about any challenges you're facing, we can step in and help you in so many ways. The more that we communicate, the more successful you're gonna be and the more we can work together for your benefit. As mentors, we're here solely to help you. That's our job, to know you, your situation, your challenges, to celebrate the good times with you, and just 100% support and offer motivation and encourage you no matter where you're at on your journey. When you come to us, the slate is completely wiped clean and there's no judgment of anything that's happened in the past because we start cheering you on from day one and we're 100% by your side all the way until the day that we see you walk across that stage. And I know that I speak for all of us when I say that we are blessed and honored 
to be with each of you every to be to eat with each and every one of you on this part of your journey in life. And as you can see, we have so much more to offer outside of just help in your class. But nothing means more to us than your health and your well-being. And all of this leads to helping you be the most successful student that you can be. Next slide. All right. Um, thank you so much, Jesse. Um, I appreciate it. We appreciate all the, the valuable information you have uh, provided. Give me one second here. We do have a couple questions, but before we get to questions, I just wanted to just cover a couple recap uh, things that you were talking about. Um, just some pro tips, as we call them. Uh, for motivation, you know, just try not to be discouraged. Everyone's got bad days, especially in in this climate and this where we're at right now. Um, but even beyond that, like everyone's gonna have a bad day, so just remember, like it's okay. Um, the check boxes, personally, I like to do uh, checklists um, every day uh, when I remember to. But it, it does really help. And when you're doing chores and stuff, it's just like once you can mark that off, it's just really helpful. Um, and then the other stuff, like the time management and learning plan, like it doesn't matter if you're with Grad Solutions or not. Um, any school system, any online student can really benefit from a lot of these tips, um, especially like what Jesse was saying. So just remember too, like, you know, the sleep and exercise, the learning plan, like, even students in a traditional district school, they're going to have like an ECAP or other type of learning plan. And those are just really great tools for any student, um, either in high school, middle school or college, uh, to focus on and make sure that you're, you're tracking your progress and celebrating those wins, big or small. So just remember that. And then for those of you that are with Grad Solutions, um, Jesse had some great reminders about the different resources and services we have um, as you build your relationship with your mentor or OC or instructor. So um, for questions, I do have a question here. Uh, do you help your students create a daily schedule? So. Absolutely. Yeah, if they, I mean, that's part of kind of the initial conversation and it's ongoing because circumstances change throughout life as far as if they have a job, if they don't, you know, just all the different things. So yeah, we talk about that a lot because a lot of times, you know, I know this, but it's organization's hard. It's hard to figure out how to best be organized and you have to kind of try different things. So we talk about that a lot um, and kind of tailor it based on the student and their situation and their circumstances in life. So yes. Awesome. Definitely. And then how many hours a day should my student focus focus on to stay on task? Like how many hours a day is for, at least for on the graduation, grad solution side, like what's the typical number of hours you'd recommend as a mentor? Well, it, it, then again, it depends on, you know, how many classes are left, what they're, it really helps us to know when they want to graduate because then we can really break down how many classes are left, you know, days of the week and all that and kind of create a schedule. It's, it's important, you know, I tell students a lot to try to work at least every single day even just for a couple hours, because that's going to keep that momentum going. And, you know, but, but again, they're all different as far as, you know, what they need as far as how many hours per day, um, how many classes are left, what their timeline is. So that's, what's really nice when we can kind of dive into that with them and help them create a schedule. But, but at least, at least every day would be, is nice. Let's see, I've got another question here. Um, how many students do you mentor? Currently, I have about 96. So we, it kind of fluctuates depending on enrollments um, and how many you know, students we have in the program at one time. So it could be anywhere from 80 to 100 is what we've seen probably in the last year. Okay. And then um, there's a question also, uh, how do we get in contact with the counselor? And actually I could answer that one. Um, our counselor's name is Valerie Wilson. And uh, I was told, I got a text also that the chat box may not be working for 
everyone. So instead of trying to put that in there or anything, we're going to do a follow-up email after uh, the presentation, and we'll have uh, Valerie's information in there. So any student or family member of a student can reach out and uh, explore those services. Yeah, and they can always check too with their OC or mentor directly as well. Okay. All right, um, any other questions coming through? All right. Well, thank you, Jesse. Um, I'll bring you back on for uh, the final recap, but we appreciate everything you've done and, and everything. Thank you. Uh, turn just here. All right. So next up for a presenter, I'd like to introduce uh, Lisa Privatera. And I'm gonna get her camera on here. And Hi. unmute her. Hi, everybody. There we are. Uh, so just a quick introduction. Lisa is one of our English language arts instructors, uh, and she'll be running the second half of this presentation. So um, welcome, Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm known in Grad Solutions as Lisa P, and you can call me Lisa, whatever. Um, I'm so happy to have you here in my living room, as you can see, and I was invited to come today and talk to you about online teaching from a teacher's perspective. So first, let's talk about building relationships because as Jesse said, it's so crucial that you develop a relationship with your mentor, but it's just as crucial that you develop that relationship with your instructor. I want to know you academically and personally. Uh, this is such a different culture being online. It does not have to be impersonal as a lot of people feel it might be. There are so many ways for us to connect and I want to know you personally and academically because this way I will know what the obstacles are that you are facing. I want to celebrate your triumphs. Um, I want to know about you, but I'm not a mind reader, so you need to let me know about the things that are going on. Email, call, text. Texting is such a big thing nowadays. I'm on my phone all the time. If you text me, I'm going to answer you right away if I'm able to. Um, this online culture is a whole new world that we are exploring. And it is very beneficial to you because, as Jesse said, you have the flexibility to approach your work when you want to and how you want to. I personally think you should try and do some work every single day. In the English department, there is so much work, there's so much reading, there's so much writing to do. You need to do it on a daily committed basis. I'm here to help you. Writing is not hard in any of our content areas, but we are here as your teachers to help you, okay? In this structure, asking questions is a key ingredient. No matter how big, no matter how small, ask it. I want to answer those questions for you. I don't want to leave you hanging out there. So please, please, please think of me as one of your text buddies. Text me, let me know what's going on. I want to be there for you. Next slide, please. Commitment. Oh my gosh, commitment to your success is the number one ingredient in anything in life. Every one of you has it in you to succeed beyond your wildest imagination. All you have to do is put your mind to it. Say, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it the best I possibly can and go ahead and do it. Everyone has the capability to enter into any of these classes that you have online, anything in life, as long as you put your mind to it. Remember, procrastination is your enemy. I have faced things in life just like you that I am not really thrilled about doing, 
But the day I discovered that if I do it right away and get it out of the way, it's no longer hanging over my head. So please don't procrastinate. Commit to being a lifelong learner. Look at me. I learn from my students every single day. You bring up new points, you bring up new observations. I'm committed to learning more no matter how old I get. So you can succeed if you put your mind to it. Next slide, please. <clears throat> oh, organization. This is so, so important. When you mentally focus on your classwork, and you have it in your head that this is what you are going to do today, you can just go ahead and do it. Avoid distractions. Put yourself somewhere where your main focus is on your class, is on getting your goal done. You have to try not to do classwork while you're tired. I know a lot of you work, and I know that you're squeezing your learning in there amongst all the other things you have to do in life. But when you are overly tired, your brain just does not absorb what you need to know, what we are trying to get you to learn. So please avoid distractions, set yourself up so that you are ready and able to learn. That is the key to this whole thing. I want to learn. Next slide, please. Okay. Taking notes is very, very important. I do it with everything. And like Jesse, I am a paper person. My notebook, it's got my motto on it. There is no problem too large or too small. And my answer to it is no problemo. Okay. As I'm talking to you here, I've got my notes going. Okay. What you have to do is you have to make sure that you have all the materials you need to properly attend to your course. How many of you brought something to write on to take down the tips that we are offering you here today? I hope you're all raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm here and I'm prepared. Taking notes during this whole thing will remind you what we talked to you about today. Okay, so now in light of your course and taking notes, the first thing that you need to do is determine your content. No course has the same information to offer. That's why they are different content areas. So if you're sitting down for your history class, you're taking notes, keeping in mind that history is all about facts, dates, and concrete details. Your science class, we're trying to figure out the high and and the how and why of everything. So think of science and the notes you need to take in view of those two questions, how and why. In your math class, you need to know formulas, steps, calculations. That's what you should be taking notes about. And my personal favorite, English. This is very different than most courses because this is more an inference class. This is more, oh, sorry. This is more reading between the lines. What is the author trying to bring across to us? What is the theme of this reading or what they're writing for us? You need to know the requirements of grammar and the conventions that we're using. And in all cases, in all classes, write down an example. An example will always remind you about what that information is that was being brought about to you, okay? Develop a system that works for you. Create abbreviations that you understand. Color code things. Make section headings. Make it fun. You know how they have those adult coloring books out now? Use your colored pencils, bring them out. Use highlighters, different colored highlighters. It's fun. It's fun to learn. Okay. Paraphrase. If you are understanding what the teacher's saying, but you're over there saying later on, I don't know what they were talking about, put it into your own words. You'll understand when you go back and you reread. And that's another thing that I want you to do. Go back and reread your notes 
once you are done. Maybe rewrite the difficult areas while it's all fresh in your head. Okay, this helps the cement to cement the info into your brain. <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta clear the throat here. As you are going through your notes, write down questions for your teacher. If you don't understand a word, look it up. There's dictionary.com. There's just the regular old traditional dictionary, which is my personal favorite. Okay, put a star next to concepts you don't understand and look for supplemental information. You're not stuck within your course. You can go outside your course. The internet is a place of invaluable information. Here at Grad Solutions, we have something incredible called guided notes. Okay, they follow your course and they point out the information you really need to concentrate on. If you want guided notes, just ask your core teacher for these and they will send them to you. And at Grad Solutions, and I don't know about other situations, you might ask your, your teacher in different platforms, but you are allowed to use your notes on your final exam and any of the other assessments, quizzes, topic tests, unit tests. The better the notes you have, the better you're going to do on those assessments. So if you take proper notes, you'll have all the info necessary at your fingertips to successfully take your final and complete your course. Next slide, please. Okay, you've heard us all talk about the LMS. This is the learning management system, and no matter which one you are using, Edgenuity, Google Classroom, Schoolology, Blackboard, whatever you're using, the lectures, activities, and assessments you encounter are all tailored to help you learn and find the ultimate success, which is passing your class and earning your diploma. Next slide, please. Perseverance. This is so important in all phases of your life but here we'll talk about it in terms of your classes. Stick to your plan. Get with your mentor, get with your counselor, whoever you are using to help you through these classes, stick to that plan. Make it one that is workable for you. Communicate with your instructor and mentor, especially when you hit a roadblock or an obstacle. Okay. If you stick to your plan and you focus on your goal, achieving it is one of the best feelings in the world. I don't think anybody could disagree with me on that. Investing in yourself and your future by committing to your goal equals success in all your life experiences. Any way you slice it, education opens many doors on your path through life. So make the most of it. As I said, become a lifelong learner. Everything that you put your mind to should be stored in that little container in your head that builds and builds and builds and becomes your life experience. Okay? Remember your why and focus on your goals. Whatever your online situation, whether it be here with us at Grad Solutions or elsewhere, if you set your goal, and follow your learning plans with all elements in place, personal and academic, with organization, commitment, and perseverance, this will guide you the whole way to your goal, which is to graduate. I hope this helped you all on your journey to be the most effective online student you can be. Thanks for sharing part of your day with me. And now I believe we're gonna go back to Chris and Jesse and any questions you have, we'll all be here to answer them. All right. I'm turning Jesse back on as well. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for covering all those topics. Um, I just wanted to do a quick recap on Lisa. So one of the points I found to be really important is no matter how big or small the question is, um, ask it. Um, as a manager, as a people manager, it can work 
Um, I love getting even the smallest of questions um, to help clarify what's going on. Uh, it just produces better outcomes and better work, um, whether it be in school or career. Um, the note taking, that's a very personal thing. So Lisa provided some great tips, but it's really about how you, you function and you operate. Um, some people like handwritten, some people like typed. Uh, personally, I remember stuff better when you handwrite it, whether or not I use those notes, but just the act of handwriting uh, presents uh, a memory in my head. So, um, And then the learning plan, that the following your learning plan and you will graduate, that's one of the um, slogans or whatever we have at Grad Solutions. Um, we believe it wholeheartedly, but that translates with any other program or school. Um, you know, set your goals, follow those goals, and you will graduate and you will be successful. So, again, uh, thank you again, uh, Lisa and Jesse. Um, I just wanted to put up here, there are some questions. If you do have additional questions, um, go ahead and uh, type them in. Um, but first question I've got is, what are teacher requirements? Are they certified, highly qualified? Actually, I can answer that question. Um, with Grad Solutions, our teachers are required to be uh, fully certified. Um, the old terminology in education was highly qualified. Uh, now it's appropriately certified and everything, but um, teachers at Grad Solutions and other programs like ours uh, must be um, content area certified um, and all of that. Um, uh, Maria, who is uh, the Director of Instruction for Grad Solutions, uh, wanted to remind everyone the guided notes are available to students within their course maps. So that's a great hint there. Um, when should I go to my mentor? When should I go to my instructor? Can I answer that, please? Anything yeah. that is content-based, anything is English, history, pertains to your assessments within that course, go to your instructor. When you go to your mentor first, you're taking an extra step and it's taking longer to get the answer to you or the solution for whatever needs to be done. Go to your mentor when you need transcripts, when you need learning plans, when you need anything that's not content-based. And I'll pass that over to you, Jesse, because I'm sure I, I missed a few things that you need them to come to you about. <laughs> no, no, that was really good. No, it, it, you're right. Anything, because as a mentor, we we can't, you know, we can see your progress and your grade in the class, but we we can't get into the content. And I mean, that's all stuff that that's for your teacher. So we do remind them of that a lot because they do come to us for everything else. But yeah, if it's, it's anything directly related to your class, just go right to your teacher and just a reminder too that when you start a new course the teacher always sends out an email with their contact information um, you can also find it in the system as well um, but they'll always send their email and phone number so awesome um, another question i've got is what does a learning plan consist of and how is the student involved in creating that learning plan so the learning plan, it's it has their information and it has the classes that they're gonna. There's usually at the beginning of the school year we assign at least six classes that they're the plan you know to do throughout the school year. So when you first come on board, that's a conversation that the orientation counselor has with them as well because they start with the orientation counselor before being transferred to a mentor. So by the time they do come to us, that's already been created, but it's still something that. I like to go over when a student's new to me, you know, we go through it and it just kind of changes all the time. Um, like I said, you know, I like to revisit it anytime they need a new class because maybe algebra is next, but they're not really wanting to start that right now. So we go over the other options and we kind of change the learning plan. So it's just a guide kind of, you know, for the whole, just the plan for the school year of what they're gonna be taking. Wonderful. Um, looks like a question from a student. Is there someone that can do tutoring for math? 
um, which I believe we do have access to that. Um, so the response I would have to that would be to reach out to your um, instructor and they can set you up with um, themselves tutoring or we actually have additional staff that can help with there. Um, those are great questions for your mentor, orientation counselor, or even your instructor. Um, but uh, specific to that question, I will put that in the um, follow-up to this. So you just have a reminder there. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions? And I do apologize, the chat box is not working. But let's see. Uh, Mar Maria, the Director of Instruction for Grad Solutions, uh, said there is an announcement in the learning management system regarding tutoring. Uh, so you could always find information there uh, if needed as well. Can I address that as well? We absolutely have tutoring available. Math, I know, is an area that, that a lot of students need help in. In most instances with that, the math teachers would like to meet with you on a you know, on a video platform, a, vi a virtual platform, which is quite reasonable because they need to show you the formulas and the calculations and the steps in finishing your, your math class. I know I always needed help with that. That's why I went into English. But um, as far as English goes, and I know history and science, the teachers are all available to go ahead and, and tutor you. I know a lot of my situations are mostly specific questions and my students like to text me and they like to email me, which is fine. And I will find resources and links and try and answer you coming from a different direction so you'll understand that concept a lot better. So yes, we are available for tutoring, absolutely. And um, Lisa, are you able to do like a Zoom call with the students? We can do a Zoom call, yes. You know, they, they just need to request it and we can we can set up a mutually agreeable time to go ahead and do that. Yes, I can do that. I haven't found any situations yet where students want to Zoom or do it virtually because as I said, with my situation, it's it's more a specific question here or there that they need. Awesome. And then um Perla, she's the director of the OC and mentoring department. Just wanted a reminder to any students listening today that your mentors and orientation counselors are there to help serve you and walk alongside you as you reach, until you reach graduation. Uh, she says they're all amazing and care for you. And um, she wanted to thank all the students today for joining uh, today. And then uh, Francis just asked, what is a Zoom call? Uh, Zoom is similar to this, but it's more interactive with uh, different people. So it's a way for you to do a video chat um, with the tutor or the instructor. Uh, and you can share screen or whiteboard on the computer, all sorts of stuff. But it's a great tool, especially right now. Um, Sean. So uh, Mr. Flake, Sean Flake, he's uh, one of our instructors at Grad Solutions. Uh, he says he's happy to talk on the phone, text, or email to answer any questions related to science classes. Um, and uh, he just wanted to re reiterate the procrastination, how that can cost you more than you can imagine. So when you get stuck on a, a final exam or a quiz, make sure you reach out to your instructor or counselor or mentor. Um, and try and get rid of that roadblock so you can move forward. But let's see, this. any other questions? Okay, so we just, um, the three of us wanted to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded. Um, we'll send you a link to the recording uh, later today, hopefully. Um, on this last slide, uh, you're going to have uh, our contact information. Uh, also, a notice about our next webinar, which is Depression and Managing Depression, which is on April 23rd at 2 p.m. Uh, it'll be on the same platform. Um, we'll try and work out the, the chat box issue. 
Uh, but, you know, we're looking forward to continuing this webinar series to provide information to everyone. Um, and then in the uh, survey that you're going to receive, don't forget to respond with some ideas to, um, to do additional webinars based on your interest and everything. So any last words, Lisa or Jesse? No, I'm accepting all fan mail at my email address. So, you know, <laughs> all constructive criticism, please. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. You've been incredible. And Chris, it's been such a privilege working oh, with thank you. Thank you both too. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. And until uh, April 23rd, have a great one and be safe. Bye.